Hey everyone, as you may recall we last left off doing loops, uh, particularly while loops, which are the most basic form of uh, loops in C-sharp. And in this tutorial I'm going to talk about some for loops, which are a little, more, um, a little more difficult and a little more advanced, but they're in the same, uh, in the same spirit. So, as you can see, I have given the talker program we did in our last tutorial a bit of a makeover. Uh, it looks much more um, uh, well formatted, I guess you could say. Uh, I basically just formatted this button to <laughs> look cooler, as you can see. Um, I just moved things around a bit, uh, resized it. Uh, nothing really fancy has, has changed. So uh, let's go ahead and double click on this button. And uh, as you can see, I have removed all of the code because we are going to uh, approach the code this time in a different in a different fashion. So the names and, and identifiers are all the same, though. This is still uh, text box one, and this is still um, numeric up down one. So just uh, a little word of caution, I suppose. Um, a for loop is done just as as any other. Um, construct we've worked with has started you basically just it's just four <laughs> and then the condition however in this case there are three separate conditions um, and only one of them really is a condition two of them are a statement and one is a condition so the first thing that we have to input for this for loop is a statement and this statement is what happens whenever the for loop is first um, whenever the for loop is 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 first run so for instance, we can create a variable. So in this case, I'm going to create a variable called int count and set it equal to zero. So that's our first statement. Our first statement basically creates a variable called count. Um, this first statement could be anything. Usually it's for creating a variable, though, um, because a for loop is generally like the while loop we did before. However, instead of having to add on to count each time, it doesn't within the for loop. So instead of creating a count out here like int count is equal to zero and then adding on to count in here the loop itself actually covers that you see so we don't actually need that right so our first statement is just creating the variable count then we have a condition now this condition is basically what makes this loop keep going as long as this condition is met each time the loop uh, restarts uh, it will keep going so for our condition we're going to make sure that count is less than numeric up down one dot value just like our last tutorial um, you know uh, it's pr that's the only thing that, that is essentially the same with a while loop it still has its condition however it does have two statements to add on so now we do our third our second statement uh, which is the last, which is the um, the last part of this for loop that we add on. So, for our last statement, you can do anything you want, but in this case, uh, in most cases, when it comes to in, when it comes to loops, you're just adding on to that original variable you created over here, this count variable. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say, for instance, count plus plus. So, each time this loop runs, well, actually, the first time this loop runs, it creates the count variable. Then, for every consecutive time after that, and that first time, it checks whether count is less than numeric up down one value. Then, it also adds one onto count right here. So, the first time it's going to be set to zero, and if numeric up down one is higher than zero, it's going to continue and add one on to count and then do this code. The next time it loops around, clearly count has been changed to one now, so it checks whether one is less than numeric up down one value, and if so, continues on, add ones to adds one to count, and then uh, runs this. So, what we want to do in here is we want to, once again, like we did in our last tutorial, um, create a message. So let's up here create a string message, set it equal to a blank string. And then we're going to take our message and add on, remember plus equals, it basically adds uh, a new string onto this already existing string. And we're going to add on um, the text box one dot text. 
remember the text box one does not have a value uh, property it has a text property that's that is its value so and then add on a new line because we don't want it to be scrunched up we want it to be you know uh, printed out in lines basically and we don't need our count plus plus because it does it within the loop so that is a for loop for you it's very very simple it's just a while loop without having to do those statements outside of the loop so it's it's very effective it's it cuts down on the amount of, of code you have to write and in general it's just very helpful now then let's just output our message just like before and if we run this program we'll find that it is very similar to the last one we created uh, let's give it I guess We'll make it say it five times, and then we'll make it say uh, Kirk. And as we can see, it says Kirk five times. Give it zero times, and it won't say it at all. Give it nothing but six times, it'll just six blank lines. So that's a for loop. It's, once again, just like a while loop uh, with a little more, uh, little more spice, I guess you could say. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And uh, in our next video, we're going to be uh, starting some object-oriented programming. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, oh, wait, no. Actually, we're going to go over arrays. So get, get ready for that. Arrays. We're going to talk about uh, variables that include multiple values using rows. So see you then. Signing off.